All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the... I guess what I'm just calling the Lux Collective Showcase. Um, so today is Saturday, which in some segments of the RPG world, that's self-promo Saturday. It's the day that you're supposed to be promoting yourself, shouting in all those threads and everything like that. I did all of that for like weeks for Nova, and I'm, I'm so glad I don't have to be doing that. And now I get to shout about other people's games. So I want to talk about this thing called the Lux Collective. MV is in chat. So glad to have you here, MV. This is really fortuitous timing because MV made this website that I have up on the, the screen here. This is the Lux Collective. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about what is the Lux Collective, um, the core concepts of it, what's been going on with it, and then I want to highlight the games that are in it. Um, we'll, we'll kind of preface that with a couple of like notes ahead of time one other note uh is that clover isn't here uh, i should probably just get something that says that up at the top of the screen or something because uh, she's out of the apartment for the weekend she's visiting family elsewhere so uh don't redeem any clover treat points they won't do anything uh even though Ty said I had to eat the treat myself last time. So <laughs> just getting that out of the way ahead of time. All right, so what is the Lux Collective? The Lux Collective is an ongoing effort um, active during the months of June through August for designers who are making Lumen games. So I released a Lumen SRD in April, I think. Uh, people started making things. The jam just recently ended. And people who are making Lumen games and itch funding them. So it's the unique combo of Lumen plus itch funding means they're a part of the Lux Collective, which is just sort of this um, constantly evolving, ongoing place, location, in this case, this website here, where people can find games that use this particular system. Everybody's got their own twist on it. And then that are itch funding, that, that want to adapt or improve or or change their game in some way through more money, right? Without having to go into to Kickstarter. So MV has made this this lovely website, which you can see lists all of the itch funding games that are out there right now. It's awesome to have that, right? And then on top of that, there's like a new section. There's an FAQ. So if you want to learn more about what this is, MV has probably done a much better job than I just <laughs> rambled through about what exactly this is, telling you what Lumen is, itch funding, how to become part of this, the cool progress bar that we're going to see on like a lot of the pages. Uh, so there's the there's this Lux Collective, and there's like 25 games or something like that. There's a lot of them out there, which is really, really cool. And so I thought it would be nice to just talk about them. Uh, I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on any of them because there's 25 of them and I want to be able to get through it. So uh, I'm going to go through this list that MV has conveniently put together on the Lux Collective website. And I'm going to just say some of the things that I either know about the game that I really like, that I think are special, or... If I don't know the game, I'm going to kind of quickly read it here on stream and, and give like first impressions. Because that's something I want to note right away is that a lot of these games I'm not familiar with. Um, they all get submitted to the jam, but I haven't had time to go through and look at all the games in the jam. Um, I've been making Nova. So uh, I'm probably going to look at a lot of these and go, oh, this is the first time I've seen this. Or I've I've heard of this game, but I haven't had a chance to really give it a read yet. So we're kind of kind of learn about a lot of these games together, which I think is cool too. So I think we're just going to start at the top and go down so that the newest projects get the earliest time in the stream. And then the older projects that have been itch funding for a while, um, they're at the end, you know, so if you're scrubbing through and you're trying to figure this out, like chronologically, then, you know, you get that sense. So let's just start here. And another thing to note, um, and you'll note this on some of these games right away, is that a lot of them are what we'd call like early access versions or anything like that, because the jam just ended. 
And so a lot of these games are like, I just got to get something in, right? I got to get a demo version of the game that I've got in. So that, again, kind of leads to this, like, a lot of these pages are going to be, you're going to see some variety in terms of how developed the games themselves or the pages are uh, and how everybody's approaching the itch funding thing. Right, like MVs doesn't have a demo up yet, but Photon is very cool, and we're going to get to it uh, very soon. So Automata is one that came in. I think this is like the last game that maybe got submitted to the jam. I think it was one of those like squeaked in at the end games here. Robot games, lots of the, you're going to see lots of these robot games. I haven't had a chance to look at this one because again, it just got submitted pretty recently. So I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I will just say like looking at the screen here, I think this is really clean and attractive layout here that's going on. So for an early access version of the game, I think it already looks fantastic. There's some goals here for itch funding. Um, they're trying to get $1,000 so that they can pay an artist to do some cool cover art and everything like that. Um, one thing that I, I don't see on all of the pages that have the itch funding thing is getting that cool progress bar. So I'll always recommend everybody to go check out MV's little hint here on how to get the progress bar because I, I truly do think the progress bar helps like pull in sales because people like to see that thing fill up. Um, so Automata, you're, you're battling robots, right? You're robots that are going out and you're fighting diabolical villains and monstrosities. That it's just sounds like good fun to me. So I'm down to, to check that one out. Cleanup Crew, I know, just also got submitted right at the end. Um, I've been sent a key, and I haven't had a chance to look through it yet. Um, oh, MV got a chance to play this. Uh, <laughs> says that they were an overpowered bot. Ten harm in a single turn. That sounds great. The, the really interesting, cool thing about um, Lumen Games that I'm seeing is everybody's like scale of harm varies a lot, too. Where... Like, I've seen some games that have bosses that have, like, 40 hit points. And I think they tap out at, like, 10 in Nova. So it's really interesting to see, like, what a, a big turn feels like for some games as opposed to others. Cleanup Crew. This game's age funding. You can see that progress bar up at the top. Um, From what I've gathered from the, the game that I've seen so far is basically you're, you're called Soul Detectives. Um, so when you're in, it's a city or it's a world in which there's sort of like magic all over the place. And when people die, their souls are supposed to kind of go beyond and they don't always. And some people are trying to capture these souls for nefarious purposes. And when that happens, you are sent in, you're part of this cleanup crew to deal with those problems. Um, so I think it's a really interesting premise, right? You're kind of like... Ghostbuster detectives, uh, essentially, from from my very initial reading of it, which is cool. Here's some really clear fund goals. I love seeing this. I get to pay myself, right? I think that's a really important tier that we don't always see in our games. Of like, hey, you sh you might want to pocket some cash for for your hard work. And so you can see that there's a nice uh, beta version of the game out. Uh, I've looked through it. It's a nice, clean layout. I I, I dig it quite a bit. Humanity Lost is another one that just came in. Uh, it's already got some funding, which is great. Uh, their goal here, you can see, is 1300 This is a bigger one. Um, I have not looked at it. I want to look at this game so badly because the premise of it sounds awesome. It's, it's the battle between heaven and hell. And this game has really cool playbooks. The classes sound awesome to me. So, like, for example... Uh, the hunter is like an animal hybrid. The sorceress is exactly who who I want to be. It's a, just a nexus of power tearing your body apart. Like that's that's my shit. I love that. I I am always the weird warpy wizard or anything like that in games. Um, although the flirtatious and glamorous chronomancer, uh, sounds pretty awesome too. So I just think these um, the the classes alone sell me on this game. Um, I think the cover, I really like really like that cover image that's on it. And there's a bunch, they have like a bunch of armies, like enemy factions that you're going to fight. And they have plans. They've got it all planned out here. They're going to bring in some really excellent people to help out as they hit different funding levels. 
Uh, and I really, truly want them to hit, like, the where they add just these new things. Like, I want to see what the Royal Regency looks like. You know how I, I feel about the sun, so I want to see what the, uh, the Solar Regency is, is all about. Fade Beyond the Veil is really cool because it... So you're going to see a lot of these Lumen games are changing a lot of the assumptions. They they go, I don't want to say against the assumptions. They just, they challenge the assumptions of what a Lumen game has to be. And I think that's awesome. This is a miniatures game, but it's not like miniatures on a necessarily like a gridded sort of thing, like a gridded map. This is like war bands, like war gaming infused into a Lumen game. So... You, you, there's a bunch of enemies and everything like that that one would expect, like these cool foes and beasts. And you are, you're the characters that are making up this war band. So I think it's really, really cool to see somebody bringing in a different, not even necessarily like a different RPG style, but a, a totally different like genre of playing games with the war gaming sort of aspect and bringing it into this space with Lumen. I know that Mark wants to do something with hex crawls, if I recall correctly, um, but I'm, of course, immediately failing to find that on the page. I remember reading that before. Yeah, I wanted to create a, a hex crawl, so that'd be really cool. And you, like, this picture right here is so cool. Of course, my computer doesn't want to load it. Like, look, that's awesome. I did so much war gaming when I was younger, so this. This would sell me on it, too, because I don't want, like, a huge-ass army that I have to collect. Like, a small war band like this, it's very cool. So, Fade Beyond the Veil. Check it out. Lotus Eater. Lotus Eater is one that I'm really excited about. I got a chance this. Uh, I got a chance to do, like, some early reading of this one. Uh, so, I, I, got, I thought it was very cool. I want to scroll down to the part that uh, highlights the stuff that I think is especially cool and oh and and Brayden is here in chat right now uh that's excellent you're working on episode two of it excellent timing um so this is really cool uh where is the of course I I looked at all of these earlier and then I was like oh yeah this is the stuff that I like about this and then I forgot yeah that's true, MV. A Lumen game exists, and I'm just like, yeah, this is the coolest thing in the world. Isn't this amazing? Um, so this is a it's a roguelike RPG, which again is one of those spaces that I'm so interested in seeing how that like what that Venn diagram looks like, like how that overlap works with with roguelikes. I love roguelikes. Like as a as a video game format, I play them all the time. Like any roguelike that comes out, I'm playing it. Um, so seeing it captured in a Lumen game is cool, and I feel like it kind of makes sense because in Lumen games, um, like, death isn't always, like, death. It's usually, like, a death penalty, and that kind of affords itself to, to maybe leaning into being supportive of a roguelike. So this is very cool. Um, I got a chance to read a lot of this stuff. There's a lot of interesting lore. There's a, The world building in this is fascinating. I think it's a really cool world that I want to play in. I forgot the name of the class that I really like. It's like Dusk Skater or something like that. It's very cool. Uh, uh, a, a leapy, blinky sort of thing. So I'm really into this. Uh, so check out Lotus Eater. Photon! MV's in chat. MV, it's time to look at Photon. So I've had a uh, Drift Skate. That's the name of it. Yes, thank you. Um, the Fell Hunters being written. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Uh, let's talk about Photon. Photon is... Oh, first of all, look how gorgeous this page is, right? Um, I'm so excited for Photon because I got a chance to sit down with MV and uh, interview them about this. So hopefully that VOD is saved somewhere on my, my Twitch channel. Um, I, I didn't realize that a lot of those bods just get deleted with time. So I got to make sure that I've saved that somewhere. Um, but it is, it is so cool. I think MV has, has linked it to, yeah. So you can check out the stream there. Fingers crossed that link works. Um, here's why I like this. First of all, inspiration is, is Hyperlight Drifter. I love Hyperlight Drifter, but this is a two player Lumen game. And so one person is the, you know, the, the, in this case, the photon, 
the the person who is going to be or the entity that is moving around in the sort of this post-apocalyptic sort of space and then the other person is the singularity so the gm sort of plays the singularity and the way that mv has captured the exploration elements of things like hyperlight drifter and also the combat uh in this two-player experience is super super cool um i mean also mv is just brilliant at layout and visual i mean just look at this like how do you not how do you not want this just by looking at these example spreads right here um so I'm super excited about this. I know that MV has been playing around with this, um, the idea of it being Lumen. Like I know that they have said like it is like Lumen inspired, and so again, I think we're gonna see some cool deviations from like core assumptions here. And Sam did a playlist. You're gonna see a few of these games that are gonna have playlists from Sam. Uh, she does excellent work, and so if you want to listen to some music that's gonna like get you in the zone for this game. Check out Photon. I'm I'm so excited for Photon. I'm also I mean I'm extremely like like Envy said I'm extremely excited about all, all of these games. A Lumen game exists and I get excited about it. This one though I was sold the second I saw the premise of it. So um, Brian made this game called Our Farm Becomes the Battlefield, and here's why I like it. It might not be. Uh, Maybe it's a little bit easier to read here. Um, low tech, anti capitalist power fantasy, and I'm interested. I'm immediately interested in this premise. And just just read this premise here. You play as displaced farmers pilot piloting magical golems. Your farm equipment essentially that has been turned into battle golems to take back the land from the wizards. Right? There's a, a monopoly that you need to destroy, and the whole thing is forming a co-op. Right? You're forming a you're forming a farming co-op. That's not easy to say. Um, and you're you're repurposing your cool golem. So like, your golems are like, yeah, I've got a, a golem that is just meant to dig things up. Like, how are we going to turn this into something that's going to allow us to take down this horrible capitalist monopoly wizard that uh, has to be destroyed? amazing premise for a game absolutely in love with it um and they just hit their first stretch goal right 150 which uh for itch funding goals uh they're going to bring in somebody to draw the three golem classes that's awesome i can't wait to see that um i'm just going to click on this person just to get a sense of like what their style might be like cool excellent excellent very excited to see this person adding the art to to our farm becomes the battlefield. So check it out. Exo. Exo is again one of those games that uh, immediately challenges the assumptions of what a Lumen game is because it's not a pure Lumen game. Um, so Crow made this, and it is based off of their. It's based off of Lumen, but it's also based off of their own system, like the Aether system. That's how I pronounce it. I don't know if that's exactly how you pronounce it. Um, so there's the Aether engine, and then there's Lumen, and they've been merged together. And the Aether engine runs off of cards. So right away, that's a, like a difference between Lumen, right? Lumen is a game that runs off of D6 dice pools. So I think that's awesome to see ways that people can transform, first of all, other things other than dice, right? Like you can play around with different types of dice and everything like that but this is just saying like what if we got rid of dice what if we use this sort of system that i have in place that uses suits and values of cards for like determining outcomes but working with a lot of the premises of lumen games in terms of these like sets of powers and everything like that uh and it's again also extremely exciting to me because it's an exosuit sort of game obviously i'm a sucker for those and uh one of the major highlights or inspirations is horizon zero dawn and I had a ton of fun playing Horizon, so uh, I think XO is very cool. It's also itch funding. Um, I don't know what the goals for the itch funding are, but just I'm happy to see more itch funding. So hell yeah, check out XO. Flickr. Uh, Roland has been working on Flickr, which I think is really cool. This is Roland's second game. Um, he also released War Dogs. Um, so I'm excited to see... War Dogs is not a Lumen game. War Dogs is a different game. Um, but...
but it's it's his second game, and Flicker is uh, Binding of Isaac. If you like Binding of Isaac, you're gonna like this game. I've checked out the the version of uh, this 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 kind of early draft version of it right now. Um, Roland found the perfect font for it. It's just kind of like it's it's not like a a gross font, but it 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 just makes me feel uncomfortable reading it. <laughs> um, and I think that's important, right? That's the goal here. Like, Roland is is clearly calling out the stuff that people love about Binding of Isaac, which is that it's it's a little disturbing, right? You're fighting really gross, awful monsters with gross powers, right? Like, in Binding of Isaac, you're, like, shooting out shit and snot bubbles and, and blood to kill blood demons and poop monsters and, and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So um, I think Roland has done a really good job of capturing that feeling here. Um, and is trying to get a print run for for Flickr, so uh, that is an excellent, uh, excellent thing to try and shoot for. I think that's as a, as somebody who's a sucker for getting print copies of everything that he makes, uh, more power to you, Roland. I love it. Uh, so if you love Binding of Isaac, check out Flickr. Urcat is really cool because um, it's again one of those hybrid systems. So it uses Lumen, but it also uses again a card based system. This is a card-based system that I'm not familiar with uh, called Mashed, which is a Korean War mash RPG. Not familiar with it. Um, but I think that's cool that, again, somebody has kind of combined the mechanics and system of something else, in this case using cards again, with the premises of uh, Lumen. The other thing that I like about Urcat a lot is that it is... It also challenges the assumptions that a lot of Lumen games make that I make because I wrote the SRD this way, uh, that Lumen is meant for combat. It's meant for hurting people <laughs> and like power fantasy combat. And in this case, that's not that's not what's going on here. You are field medics who are going into combat zones, into war zones, things like that. But your goal is to help people. You're there to try and um, patch people up, extract them from dangerous war zones uh, and, and like battlefields and things like that. So I think that's awesome, right? That and kind of makes sense given that it's a it's being hybridized with something that's called Mash, right? Um, so I see this. I think I I see this as a cool challenge to the assumptions of this. Like, look, it's a, it's a healing rolls chart. That's not in any of my <laughs> games, and I think that's awesome to see. So uh, Urcat is going to be a cool uh, again hybrid card game that also challenges the assumptions of combat. But let's get right back into the combat here with Dot Brawl. Dot Brawl is awesome for a lot of reasons. The aesthetic alone, like I'm I'm sold because I love this. This vibe is very much stuff that I'm into. I think that's why I like MV stuff so much. Um, like you saw Photon. <laughs> um I I love this. And this is a it's a skirmish game. It's a battle game. It's a battle and it's an arena battler game here so as you can see cyberspace arena battle game and beyond the aesthetics that i really like and i know the layout looks fantastic because i've seen like collections of the full-blown spreads um but it's very customizable so it, the whole game works under these premises that you are like attaching certain mods and equipment and things like that to your fighter to be the 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 exact type of arena fighter that you want to be I think that's really neat, right? As opposed to other games like like Nova, for example, which is like, here's your prepackaged thing. Like, this is the class. This is everything that they have. This is what you get. Um, this is, what do you want to do? What are you going to put on the head? What are you going to put on the arms? Uh, I think that's super, super cool as a, as a premise. Um, so I love it. And uh, itch funding, right? So we're, we're seeing some itch funding going on for this right now. And... They're trying to. They're already taking pre-orders for physical sales, which I think is awesome. So they're, you know, they're, the intention is to, to ship this thing, to to print it and ship it, and uh, you can pre-order it right away from itch. I think that's cool. I think that's one of those things that's also super tricky. I I know a lot of people who are trying to figure out how to get their print stuff sold and like without having to make your own site, and it's really hard, right? It's it's hard, and I know there's a lot of people who are trying to figure it out on itch, so I'm excited to see more people try and figure out ways to get print out to people. 
All right, Mechanesis. This is one that I have seen uh, in earlier parts as well. We got another robot fighting game, which I'm never going to get tired of, honestly. Um, I've had chances to see this like in multiple drafts throughout the time. So Matthew has sent this to me to show me different elements like the tables or the different gear and everything like that. And that's a big part of this game. Similar to what we saw before, this game is all about gear. So you can see that it, it takes up like a substantial amount of pages in the book. It's building together your robot, your exoframe, uh, in the uh, in the way that works for you. And I, I think that's cool. You know, it's this this sense of how do you want to how do you want to be how do you want to feel powerful, right? Because uh, Lumen Games, again, they lead into this premise of power fantasies. Well, okay, so you know you're going to be a highly powerful robot. What is going to make you feel powerful? What kind of gear and stuff like that is going to make you feel powerful? And I think that's awesome. Um, there's lots of stuff that's going on here. Um, I know that Matthew is itch funding it as well and is doing it based off of copies sold rather than funds. So that's why we're not seeing like a bar up at the top here. Um, so that's just one of those things that you track in the background. Uh, check it out. Check out Mechanesis. Again, it's another one of these Ashcan versions that are out there. Uh, Angel Spawn was an Ashcan earlier, and now it's it's out. Like, you can go get the game right now. Uh, a different Matthew uh, did this one. Angel Spawn, it's Diablo. And I think that should sell you on the premise alone, right? It's Diablo in RPGs. I'm a sucker for Diablo. I play played a shit ton of Diablo back in the day. Um, and so I'm I'm all for this. And this is also another one of those games that I had the um I had the the luck of being able to sit down and talk to to Matthew about this on one of the Lumen design streams that I did a long time ago, it feels like. Um and th so there, are, let me just highlight the two things that I'm really excited about for for Angel Spawn. First, the the way that resources work in this game. Um, if you know, like in Nova, fuel is very straightforward. It's just a resource that you spend to do your powers, and everybody gets it back the same way. Angel Spawn does it totally differently. So all of the classes can generate their resource based off of how that class works. Very much like in Diablo. So like in Diablo, the way that the wizard class gains their their resource that they use to ca use their abilities is different than like the crusader, right? Or the monk or the, you know, name any class. They all do it differently. Some just kind of passively regain it. Some have to go like get hurt or deal harm themselves. And I think that's awesome. That absolutely captures, it leans into that idea of, here's how you're supposed to play this class, or here's how this class is supposed to feel. So I love that. The other thing is that <laughs> Matthew has nailed the concept of loot generation in this, which uh, enemies are just dropping shit tons of loot, and it's just random tables that you're rolling on to see what you can, what is going to like dump out of these enemies. And like in Diablo, you know, a lot of it's not going to be what you're looking for. And you just grind that stuff down into crafting materials, and you can eventually build up the the gear that you want. And like Matthew's got stuff like uh, sets, sets for armor, right? If you if you have like three pieces of this named set of armor, then you're gonna get these cool bonuses. So it's just it's very very cool. It leans into the things that are most important, or like a lot of the things that are very important in a Diablo style game. So. Love, love, love Angel Spawn. Where am I? I'm at Enter the Beast. Enter the Beast is one of those games that I haven't had a chance to read yet. So, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, I haven't had a chance to read all of these uh, games, but I like the premise of Enter the Beast, uh, mostly because of this fantastic art. Uh, I think this art is super cool. I actually don't, like, is this... This is like collage made, right? Like somebody made this with with collages, which I think is is super cool. Um, it's a folk fantasy fighting game, which is uh, not a a quick easy thing for me to say, but it's very fun. Uh, the art throughout the book is amazing. Yeah, I mean, if the art looks like this, I'm I'm so down. Like this is awesome. I'm sold just on this sweet eagle that's playing. 
playing the guitar, right? Um, and here's a cool thing that I like about this, and I think this is something that I think is important with... Uh, with I, I had to write something about this in Nova, which was like, if there's no reason for you to do these missions to go out and murder everything, like it feels soulless. And I think that's cool because that seems to be part of the premise of this game is like you're doing this as a team you're going as a squad you're going out on these missions why are you doing it though like like why is why why is that a thing that you have decided to do i know that there's uh new stuff coming out here uh so like there's the cool pre-order uh adventures right away i think that's a really cool and important thing to have in your games especially if you want to sell somebody on an early version of your game is saying like, listen, I know um, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue developing this. Here's how you can immediately start playing the game. Like, Here's all the tools that you need. And so giving a bunch of these adventures right away, three of them, that's really, really a fantastic idea so that I could just sit down and start playing these. Uh, and also, I'm just realizing I'm seeing this right now. Um, some new rules involving a tower block? That's very cool to me. We're going to bring out our Jenga sets to play our games. That's awesome. Uh, so here you go. Enter the Beast Trinity. Uh, check it out. Gun Bear. You like shmups? You like shoot 'em ups You like bullet hells? Then Gun Bear is the game for you, which I think is fascinating. I'll just say I'll, I think that's fascinating. The author is here in chat to tell us all about it. No, I won't make you I won't make you go into all of this, but this is this is so so cool. Right? Like because let's think about the premise of Lumen is to capture some of the things that we love about like again, this is how I wrote it. A lot of people have deviated and I think that's awesome. The premise for Lumen in the beginning to me was how do I capture some of my favorite video game genres and turn them into role-playing games? And some of those are easier or more straightforward to me than others. So, like, for example, when we saw with Lotus Eater bringing in roguelikes, I think that's a cool element that I think can translate well to the role-playing space. Shmups! Like, if you asked me to make a bullet hell game or a shoot 'em up game, uh, I would have been like, I don't understand how to do it. But we've got it now. We've got it with Gun Bear. And I remember seeing this cover posted in the Discord and going, oh, yeah. This is going to be really good. This this looks fantastic, right? Like, look at this awesome, very cool art. It's it a hundred percent knows what it's all about. It's leaning into the um, the genre, into the vibe of what the game is. I also love that it's called the Scuffed Edition instead of like an early access or a beta or anything like that. Uh, calling it the Scuffed Edition is super cool, and yeah, you are you're you're going to be fighting against the invading enemy forces here. It's a military sci-fi game. Uh, lots of cool inspirations here. Sorry about this, my phone just exploded. And I had to make sure everything's okay. Um, lots of cool uh, inspirations here. The one that jumps out to me is Armored Core. Uh, it's, it's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, <laughs> here's one of my, also my favorite things. The full version will come with actual GM advice, which now makes me wonder what kind of GM advice is in there. Uh, right now i love this we got the clear layout of the funding goals themselves um i want to go fight some laser bugs for sure so if you want to see how to capture the shmup feeling from the video game space at the tabletop check out gun bear for sure that's awesome i think i should have made like a counter of how many times i said awesome in this stream because it's an embarrassing amount i think all right let us continue. Speaking of Starfighters, here's another one. Starfighter Cygnus. Uh, I've had a chance to look at some of the spreads for this in the uh, in the, the Discord because they're not here on the page. I, I want to see them get added to the page here because uh, the premise here is that it's it's like it's uh, you know like space starship fighting like dog fighting in space and the big uh, inspirations. Where is it on the page here? Battlestar Galactica and the spaceship arcade shooter so we're kind of seeing like a little bit of um similar inspiration here but with battle galactica going on as an inspiration and it's it's 
not even necessarily that you see that in the way that the starship fighting happens. Like, yeah, it's there. But the cool thing about this is that it, when you die, when you're when you die in this game, you don't have to actually die, right? So your your ship gets shot out in the middle of the fight or something, and then you choose from this cool list of problems, complications, and a lot of those complications are things that are more on the more like personal or political level back on the main ship, rather than like your character can't use this power anymore or lose minus one this stat, right? Like that stuff's that stuff's fine as a as a death penalty, but this leans into a lot of that stuff that we we like in our Battlestar Galacticas of the drama and the intrigue and the tension that you have with problems going on back on the main ship, and that manifests as as complications that happen during the dog fighting out in space. Um, so Starfighter Cygnus is it it captures the the blending of the line or the it blurs the line between those two genres very very well. Aegis. Aegis is up here. Um, I had a chance to talk to Eric about Aegis as well. Uh, this is one of those games that um, we I sat down during the early uh, Lumen Design streams, and this is Anthem. If you wanted an Anthem game that is good, here you go. <laughs> go buy Aegis. Uh, first of all, the art is fantastic. That's like I think it's really fantastic art right there on the cover space, um, or cover space, and I love the the layout is again this is beautiful to me. I love these these like clean layouts like this too, with just like a couple of colors to highlight, like get you into the mode of what this person this class is supposed to feel like. It's it's really really cool, and so. Eric did a fantastic job of capturing a lot of the things that um, were good or promised in Anthem um, and now made real in the tabletop space. The one thing that really I, it stands out from my interview with Eric was um, the, the rationale for the creation of the classes in like a lore perspective. And this is something that I, 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 I then borrowed from Eric because... Like, why are these four classes, why do they exist? Um, and, you know, you could just say, well, for team comp purposes. But why why really would they have been created? And and Eric explains that in a way that makes them compelling and interesting. That was, so that was something that I tried to capture with Nova then. Like, why does this class exist? Like, why was this particular spark created? Um so I think I think that's a really excellent premise. Beautiful art. Uh, absolutely check out Aegis. Hedge, I could spend about 10,000 years talking about how excited I am about Hedge. Hedge, I'm I'm a sucker for because it's a it's a game about the Fey, but you're not you aren't Fey. You're fighting them. You're battling them. Um, basically, the Fey are pissed off. They're gonna like fuck with our world, and you get selected to be one of these characters, these wardens, um, and the wardens then are the defenders against the Fey invading forces. Uh, I know the Drakes put this together like real quick, but it's huge. It's like they say, it's sixty-five pages. It's I love the the graphic design of it. It looks fantastic. Um, it's filled with enemies. And the thing that I, I love about the yeah, 102 powers. There's so many, there's so much going on here. It's this game is packed. <laughs> it's totally worth it. And I know that they're working on an expansion for it right now called Hearth, which is a like a base building element that they are adding to this game. And I've seen that now. Like a lot of games are like, how do I get base building into my my stuff? Um I just go knock on MV's door if I want base building because that's what they're really good at. Um, so you know that this game is getting expanded on, even though it's already huge. But here's the thing that I really like about it. Uh, well, there's lots of things, like I said. But um, one of the things I want to highlight here is the passive power for the the wardens. So every warden has a passive power that generate. Oh, I'm hiding it. Let me hide myself here. Um, so yeah, now you can see it. The every warden has a passive power that uh, 
generates a resource that is unique to that that class, that that warden, and they can spend it to do things. So like here, the Bastion, whenever they take harm, they gain a point of anchor that they can use to redirect attacks to themselves, and those attacks do less harm, right? So that's the thing that I think is really cool about, that's, again, one of the things that I think is really cool about this game is the the passives are the unique currency that the the classes then create for themselves that really then lean into what your role is at the table. I'm a sucker for it. Check out Hedge. Buy it for sure. Scrapyard Junk Bots. I'm sold on this game for, I mean, one, I, there's a billion reasons that I really like it, but here's, here's the reason why I'm just going to highlight it right now. There's a crow bot in it. Uh, it's again one of our our we're hitting our robot uh robot battler games post apocalyptic sort of space. You are a ragtag group of self-made bots. Uh which is a very great premise. And then there's like a whole bunch of gnarly things that you have to deal with like the eldritch machines, the hordes of the singularity that you're fighting against. Um there's some really great art in this. I, I first of all, I just love this graphic design. Like I love these little gears. The gears for the page counts is awesome. Uh, I love this. I love this robot. I want to know more about this robot. I want to know more about this robot. <laughs> um, so like here's a tinkerer. Like that's the sort of class that you can play if you want to play as this mechanic. God, I love this robot so much. <laughs> um, but there's so there's um. There's three classes in the, the quick start version of the game. Uh, and, you know, right away you can see we're going to get ourselves a Necromech and a Crowbot and an Eldritch Machine and a Swarm. Like, God, those sound so cool, right? These four. I mean, not to not to diminish the effect of the mechanic tank and ghost. Those are cool, too. Uh, but I'm... I had the same effect when I was making Nova classes where like the the second half of classes were all like the really weird ones like the necromancer spark and the vampire spark. Uh so I see this stuff and I go hell yeah. Absolutely hell yeah, Andre. This is awesome. Um so it's itch funding. Check it out absolutely. Uh great layout. Uh cool art. Love all the premises of this. And as you can see also one more thing to highlight here. Like it's it takes this concept of like uh, health and everything and breaks it down into the different parts of robots, which I think is awesome as well. Rather than just like you are a a, a meat bag full of hit points, a robot obviously would have that stuff spread out, and we have that stuff spread out across our bodies in terms of their function. So, uh, scrapyard junk bots, check it out. Oh no, oh no, you I you weren't here at the beginning. I should have I I gotta get a thing at the top. Clover's not here. Right now, I'm so sorry that you <laughs> you responded, or that you. Oh, I'm sorry. That's uh. I gotta eat the treat. I I I swear I I gave her treats are with. Her mom, my partner, who's at her family's house right now. No <laughs> clover unfollowed. Close, cancel Spencer. This is outrageous. I can't. There's no clover. It's not worth it anymore. Um, I know it feels so weird not having her here right now. I'm sorry. Like, I, th I think this is like the third per. Yeah, I have to eat the treat. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna give when when she comes back. I think like three people across a couple streams now have have redeemed it when she's not here. So she's gonna get a lot of treats when she gets back, and she's gonna have no idea why, and that's gonna be fine. Um, five check. I talk about vibe check. Wait a minute, where's vibe check? Oh, it's coming up. I don't know why I had it open already. <clears throat> okay, Mame. Here we go. This is one that had a um an Ashcan version of it earlier, uh, and now they've got it out in the the full version. It's a death sport, right? So right away we're seeing again a. I won't say it's like a complete departure of like the genre that Lumen is is typically written in because it is a death sport. It's not just a sport. Um, and you score points by killing people, right? A point is scored when a main player is killed. But I just think that idea of playing out a 
something other than like the the thing that again I after seeing all of these entries, I see all of these awesome awesome things where people are like, oh yeah, um, you know. What if we did this with Lumen? For because for me, I'm stuck in my little box that I think about my games of like I love these like tight gameplay loops of missions and everything like that. And then somebody goes, "What if I just made a sport and used Lumen instead?" And it's a death sport, and I think that's fucking awesome. Um, the art is really cool too. Uh, there's there's a, a few different pieces that you could see up on the page of some of the the different characters that you could play as the different athletes. Again, this robot. This is my favorite one. I want to know so much more about this. Um, but like seven different classes, seven different ways to kind of play the sport, essentially. Dozens of enemies. I'm so curious to know what enemies looks like in a, a game, again, that's about like a team sport, essentially. Uh, and uh, I love this. I'm such a sucker for this. And we're going to talk about this in another game real soon here. Equipment that comes with brand loyalty right so you get like your sponsorship and you wear their equipment and you're gonna get boons from from wearing the right brand and everything like that i love seeing the laid out uh description of the itch funding that is going on here i love seeing that they're going for the print run you know me i'm a sucker for a print run uh so that's very very exciting i will i normally play support based classes in video games so i want to play this cheer class that would be really cool although i'm also a sneaky son of a bitch and would probably play the secretive shade as well uh mame is super cool love the hyper death sport uh check it out intruder intruder is very cool it's your xcom game um it's gonna be one of two xcom games that i think uh, i don't know is cyber rats Cyber Rats isn't on the list because it hasn't come out yet. It's your first XCOM game that you're going to see uh, out right now. Uh, and there's lots of reasons that I like this game. First of all, I like the XCOM games in general. So seeing them brought to the tabletop, hell yeah, I am all in on that sort of thing. And it has a base building system to it, which is one of those things that I think a lot of us eh, are excited to see in our games, especially, and I think this is true, with these Lumen games that are mission-based, like, it adds a layer of why. Why are you going out and doing this stuff? You see a level of progression that goes beyond, like, your character Your character can just murder more efficiently. Um, so seeing this base building stuff is is always cool. Here's the thing that I like about um, about Intruder the most as an, as an XCOM game is that you can play as a non-human, right? I want to... I want to play as a funky alien that wants to to fight against the aliens. Uh, I think that is very, very cool. Uh, and you're gonna get more art and lore and everything like that in the in the full version of the game. So check it out, Intruder. Where am I? Vibe check. This is another one of those games that I could talk about for like 10,000 hours. Cause I've played Vibe Check. Of all of these games, this is the only one I've played. Um, I need to play more Lumen. I just need to play more games in general. Um, but this is the only one that I've played. And I have had the funnest time playing this game. So Josh made this. Um, and uh, I don't know the, the source material. I'm not familiar with this. So when, when Josh was pitching this game and asking for playtesters and i i just immediately volunteered because i love everything that josh makes i then realized oh i have no fucking clue what this this game is supposed to be about and it doesn't matter it's so much fun so this is this is inspired by uh the video game the world ends with you um which again i hadn't i had not played i think it originally came out on the ds there's a switch version of it now um i still haven't played it but the premise is you're all dead you're all dead, and you're an inverted city version of the city that you all live in. And you are playing the Watcher's game. Which usually involves like going out on doing these really high-octane, action-packed, stylish missions uh, that if you eventually win the Watcher's game, you get your life back. Like, you have a chance at, at, re, at, at coming back. And just look at this game. Look at this. It's beautiful. It's so cool-looking. 
awesome graphic design. Also, some hints as to what we might get for future art. I think that's awesome, right? Here's like some preview art on the page. That helps incentivize the itch funding, right? If you say, I'm going to try and get some character art, and you have some concept art you can show off, that's going to pull people in. I think that's an excellent idea on Josh's part. But here's the coolest, I mean, there's so many cool things about this. The game is insanely stylish. You are going out on these missions, and you have powers based off of these tokens, which are like, they can look like anything. Like, in this character art, you can see that they're pins. But, like, for my character, it was streaks of color in my hair that I had that represented my different powers. Other people had, like, tattoos or stickers. It could look like anything, and they manifested these really cool powers that you have that you go out and you use when you're on these missions. The other game is not only stylish in just the over-the-top action of it, but it's stylish literally in the clothes that you're wearing. Similar to what we saw before with like brand loyalty in, in MAME, same thing here. You want to have clothes that fit the brand that is the most stylish at the time. So like sometimes some brands are really popular and so they give you a boon and then other times brands are not as popular uh and it's it's to your detriment to be wearing those clothes and so you want to make sure that you are in fashion while you are playing the watchers game and i think that is super super cool look i even did a a quote for it uh i think it i think it's fantastic and josh is killing it right now the i they're coming up on the more art um, for art itch funding goal, which is great. Love to see this more tokens thing, because there's already tons of tokens in the game, but to see it get up to like 100 powers that you can you can eventually uh, get access to is, is great. Check out Vibe Check. Dark Star. I think a lot of people have been playing this recently. Uh, I think some people were playing this the other day, or I was reading about some people who were playing this. Um, this is another one of those games that I haven't had a chance to be able to look at too much on my own, um, but I know that the premise is a Dyson Sphere built around a black hole, which just sounds awesome. And I remember when I looked at this page, the thing that jumped out the most at me were the inspirations. Because look at these inspirations on the page here, right? Uh, I mean, so, so, like, here's what you're going around. You're going around to this Dyson Sphere, and your adventure is exploring this space, this this dark star station, and you're you're dealing with all the the problems on it. But look at the inspirations here. 1920s radio shows. Okay, that gets me into a certain mindset about what this game is going to feel like. And Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> I think that's awesome, right? Like, imagine the mashup of those two premises uh, in a... In a game, sounds fantastic. You're going to get a very certain vibe because of the radio shows in terms of, like, tech and, like, threats and everything like that. And then what you're capable of and what you can do being, like, bound into this uh, realm of Ratchet and Clank, which is all extremely over-the-top and uh, exciting because of how over-the-top it is, uh, it sounds fantastic. So here you go. You can get it. It's an Ashcan version of it. Uh, available as well. So check out Dark Star. We just have a few more to go. We just have a few more to go. Thank you so much for everybody who's been sticking around and, and going through this. Um, Monster Guts. Monster Guts. This was played... I, I got to watch this be played uh, on the, the Discord server two nights ago. I think it was two nights ago. Because... Uh, a group of people were playing it, and uh, they had this cool map that they were constantly updating in the text channel. So I got to kind of live vicariously watch this game. It's Monster Hunter using the Lumen system. Um, and you can see that the the first uh, kind of itch funding goal has been hit, and now there are more beyond that uh, that is being shot for. It's Monster Hunter. There are so many things that I love about Monster Guts. Uh, not the not the least of which is that I got to design one of the monsters for it. I got to design a crow beast, a gnarly crow for you to go hunt. Um, but on top of that, 90 minutes. Look at this. This is I love this. I'm a sucker for the 90 minute session. It's we know what we're here to do. We're here to hunt a monster. We're gonna have 90 minutes of like high octane, adrenaline inducing monster hunting fun, and then we're gonna wrap it up. 
and here's why this is so cool. Because when I make Lumen games, again, this is my assumption, it's like fighting, just like wiping out waves of enemies because they stand no chance against you with how powerful you are. This is you're fighting one thing, right? you got to fight this monster, this big-ass monster. How are you going to do that? How are you going to capture that with the GM turn? It is captured so nicely through this cool AI system that is programmed into the monsters themselves in terms of how they act, um, which is, you know, we see this in, we've seen this in like board, captured in board games and a whole host of other games of how would this enemy act, you know, given like without needing a GM or uh, in a way that simulates a, like an actual fight that doesn't become predictable where I hit it, it hits me, I hit it, it hits me over and over again. Because if that's what this was, just like two big bags of hit points, it wouldn't be fun. But that's not what's going on here. There's this really cool AI system for how the monsters are acting. And on top of that, all of the parts of the monster have their own HP. And so like you're trying to smash and destroy the different parts of the monster itself. And, uh, and they have... And then you also have all the different weapon types which is the a, a big thing that you see in monster hunter and dauntless and games like that is like this is how i fight i use this weapon uh and that kind of helps create your classes and then there's elements there's there's so much stuff going on and then there's the card stuff that's going on here so how do you track positioning in this game a lot of lumen games use theater of the mind but uh, Monster Guts uses this really cool system of laying out cards to represent the battlefield. And like you can use that as sort of like a, a makeshift gridded map. So first of all, that's great so that if you don't have a map, but you have like a deck of cards handy, boom, you've got your map, so to speak. Um, it's, it's just so good. There's so many things I love about this game. Uh, so check, check this out. And... Uh, this concept of the, the cards comes in in another game that's not in the Lux Collective, uh, but uh, I'll hopefully be able to highlight in just a second. Oh no, I've closed the Lux Collective. One second. Rust buckets! Pardon me, I need a drink of water. I feel my voice going. I don't talk to people very often. Apologize for that. Rust buckets! Here we go, post-apocalyptic robot game. I'm never going to get sick of them. I think they're great. Um, and again, this is one of those games that leans into the... Like, there are classes, yes. But then there are parts and tags that you use to build out your class. So there's four classes in the game. So you have like a, like a, a starting point. But it's all about customizing your character because of... The different parts that you're going to attach to yourself and the tags then that are uh, incorporated into those parts so that you could have everybody playing the same thing like everybody could be uh, a tinkerer for example but the the parts that you're attaching to yourself are going to make you play differently that's awesome like we see we saw that like with dot brawl for example the the emphasis on like building your character and that just makes so much sense with the premise of the game you're robots so of course you're going to have these cool mechs that could be very highly customizable based off of swapping in and out of different parts so there's a quick start out right now where you're gonna get a lot of the stuff going on here uh you're gonna get a lot more if we get to the full version of the game uh art three more classes more powers more everything love it here's also a really cool breakdown of itch funding that i think cole does a really good job of, of writing it out here um I really appreciate that. And then here's all the stuff that's going on for the the funding goals. So, and then here's the other thing that I really like that Cole has done um, that I don't see as often because oftentimes this stuff is linked up to the goals themselves. Here's a roadmap. Like here's a here's a design timeline and production timeline uh, that you can expect for for Rust buckets. So that's awesome. Check out Rust buckets. All right, we've got three to go. Crystalline crystalline uh maddie i'm sorry i don't know how you pronounce it so i'm just gonna say crystalline uh it, this is great it's final fantasy 14 if i recall correctly here's here's my biggest gamer sin i've never played any final fantasy game. never played any of them yeah, actually that's not true i've played tactics which is not one of like the main games i'm pretty sure this is 14 though wait 
Let me read this. Yes, it is inspired by 14. Crystalline is awesome. Uh, I got a chance to to read uh, some like the early versions of this. This game is huge. There's a lot going on in here. And I know that this is something that Maddie's like especially good at, that they they love this kind of crystal punk or Magitech stuff. In fact, they've got a game up on Kickstarter right now that is a similar sort of premise to this. So I think Crystalline acted as a nice sort of like um, maybe warm up to that using the Lumen system. The, the thing on Kickstarter doesn't use Lumen, but it's still very, very cool. Uh, here's what's awesome about this is that, uh, and it's not here on the page. Let me go find it real quick. <laughs> Damn it. I don't know where it is. Can't find it. There's a there's a season pass to this. And I don't see the link to the season pass anywhere. <laughs> Damn it, where is it? Oh, wait. Season. I can't find it. I can't find the quick, easy link to the season pass. But Maddie made a season pass for this. So uh, it's getting continuous support through that sort of like monthly drip feed of new ways to play the game so there's going to be like new classes and everything like that i <laughs> remember saying um how all lumen games have to have a crow in them this thing that i joke about on twitter and they were like well hold on i've got like a reaper class coming out of my season pass that can can get some of that corvid stuff going on so don't worry this game will be a legal lumen game soon uh, but I think it's awesome. If you if you love Final Fantasy, if you love Crystal Punk or or Magitech and stuff like that, this game is gonna feel awesome to you. You're really gonna dig it. Gun Fox, Gun Fox is killing it in terms of itch funding. Uh, again, I had the the extreme pleasure of talking to Adira about this on stream uh, about how this game was going. It's Borderlands. It's Borderlands brought into the Lumen system and captured perfectly and i think the thing that was so amazing about this is that i think adira said that she has only played an hour of borderlands herself she's watched other people play it and what's incredible is that you would you would have assumed that she's played thousands of hours based off of reading this game <laughs> um it's so dripping with the uh the vibe that you get from borderlands desolate planet overrun with bandits and monsters and things like that you're going out searching for these sort of vaults uh so one thing that's really cool about gunfox is that there is sort of like woven into it this concept of like a story campaign rather than just this cyclical mission thing like if you go do these seven things you you did it you did the thing congratulations which is awesome but then on top of that it has all the other things that you love about borderlands so really cool classes uh different brands of weapons right so all the brands have their own sort of like passive effects elemental effects that are going on in this stuff as well a, a wild amount of enemies for you to go fight while you're out on your quests just look at this cool art that dyer did uh, basilisk online did and you can see like there's cool art that has already been added like more art for the characters themselves, more quirks and perks and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, Roland, she she did such a good job that it's like, yeah, well, I don't need to do Borderlands now because Adira nailed it. She's also extremely close to getting more art. Uh, some of the stuff for like the enemy types and landscapes, I think that would be awesome, right? Because um, usually some of the earliest art you see is going to be like character art, but it's cool to see some set piece art. Uh, and she's not too far from it. Not too far from it, like 150 bucks away. So uh, that's just that's just like 10 more people buying this game. That would be awesome. Go check check out Gunfux. It's super, super cool. Rad as hell. Uh, looks like somebody did a hype swap on it too. So uh, John, John's been doing a great job with hype swaps. So go check out that. And let's end our journey through the Lux Collective with the first one which is actually not even itch funding anymore. Um, but In Extremis was the first one that came out. It was the first Lumen game that I didn't make. Uh, and it is 100% amazing.
got my printed copyright here of in extremis uh it's necromancers it's space necromancers which i didn't know was a genre that i needed in my life until the discord shouted at me or shouted in general about uh gideon the ninth and then i went and read gideon the ninth and i went oh i get it this is really fucking awesome <laughs> um and so keegan has made a an, a truly excellent game out of this you play as different types of necromancers that are all um focus on a different element of of necromancy so you you know your your thing could be the all about bones right bones and skeletons you you could be all about um blood i played as a neuromancer when i got to play it on stream i'm in that video up at the top uh so i was all about like brain stuff right like messing with people's brains i could always detect when people were lying um keegan has done a fantastic job doing the layout and everything the itch funding it crushed it they were able to bring on a whole bunch of other people to make things. There's an awesome map in here. Because I don't think the map is one of the... Uh, this awesome solar system map that MV made. This is awesome. I'm not doing it justice by holding it up to my, uh, my webcam like that. But MV did the map for light. And then did the map for... In extremis, it looks fucking awesome. It's so good. Uh, so check this out. You know, it's not it's not itch funding anymore, but I think it's worth checking out. And Keegan is the link here. I know Keegan's doing a season pass for this as well. So, and I can't find it. <laughs> I can, ah, maybe here it is. Yes, here it is. The season of discovery. Here you go. So here's more in extremist stuff. If you like in extremist, you're gonna get a whole bunch more from uh, Keegan over a few months time. And that's it. That's the Lux Collective. I wanted to highlight some amazing designers today who have been doing really cool work with Lumen in general, taking their own takes on it, and uh, I think that's it's very very exciting. I do want to show off. Um, one other thing well i guess in general i just want to show off like look there's more there's plenty more of these games out there like tempest just came out and tempest is very cool um tempest is awesome it's sky pirates right so there's plenty of lux or lumen games out there that are yeah, Black Hole. A bunch of people were just playing Black Hole. I feel like I was reading about a bunch of people playing Black Hole. Um, so there's a... And I love that it's called the butt ugly but free version. <laughs> to get in at the the end of the jam. Like, here's a collection... So here's the collection of Lumen games that are out there. Um, that... I appreciate it. That's awesome. The, there's plenty of them out there that are not itch funding. Or maybe they will eventually itch fund, but they just wanted to get out there. And so, you know... It's important to check out all the Lumen games. I got to make sure that I get these links readily available to people, easy to find. I'll, I'll put links to this stuff up on the Lumen page itself so that it's there. I have these as collections on my personal page, but I want more people to be able to see this because um, there's just some really cool stuff. Like Endgame, this is a, a, a game agnostic toolkit for if you wanted to add like boss mechanics to your game. How could you do that? It doesn't matter what genre you are. Here's more stuff. Um, so there's lots of neat games in here that weren't part of the itch funding, like the Ace Attorney game. There's something that challenges the assumption that it's about combat. Lots of the games out here. Um, it's worth scrubbing through this list and seeing what has been was has been done. I'm just gonna open up this Pact Bound because I wish it didn't open it up like this. Because I'm a sucker for it. Josh, who made Vibe Check, has made a game called Pact Bound, which is Dishonored. As a huge Dishonored fan, I have to give this just an extra highlight, an extra shout out here. It's part of the um, the Arcane Collective. So there's a, a group of people who are making games that are based off of Arcane Studios. Uh, and this one in particular is based off of Dishonored. Um, Here's why I love it. It's it's it has like noise rules. This right here is fucking awesome. I'm gonna hide myself just so that it's fully visible. Look at this, a power tree map thing. What an insanely cool way to uh 
to like build your character, right? This is this is really really neat. Uh, rather than having like a set class or anything like that, it's you're gonna go down these skill trees, not even skill trees, but power trees, right? Here's all the different powers that you can get. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm such a sucker for this that I had to I had to make sure that I showed that off here before we before we wrapped up. Yeah, I would love to see more skill trees and stuff like that. I remember somebody showing me like one of the Final Fantasy ones, and I was overwhelmed by it. It terrified me. <laughs> um, but that's it. I think that's gonna that's gonna wrap up today's stream. We've been going for a little over an hour, and my voice is going away. So you know, that's <laughs> that's me. I gotta talk to people more often. Uh, but this has been a this has been a blast. Thank you all for for checking this out. I'll make all these links available. I'll save this VOD so that it's available for people who didn't get a chance to see the whole thing, see the, the showcase. But I really wanted today to be about highlighting some of the other incredible designers who have been doing stuff with Lumen because <clears throat> I really don't think my Lumen stuff would be nearly as popular if a bunch of other people didn't latch on and make their own stuff. So uh, super excited to see all of this wonderful work from people. Uh, and we'll, we're going to wrap it up there. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is you are. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one.